Hi, and welcome to this week's edition of the Las Vegas Advisor Weekly Update with Anthony and Andrew. Uh, today, we are joined by two esteemed guests. Uh, you know, we teased this last week in our last video, um, but there was some controversy surrounding the World Series of Poker main event, uh, specifically with the winner. So uh, let's get into it. Anthony, uh, we, we, you want to introduce our panel? Yeah, and a couple of things. We're, we are shooting this uh, a few days before it's going to air because it was just we had the, the guys in-house and uh, I'm on uh, deadline for LVA next week. So a few things might transpire before this airs, but, you know, we're going to get into it pretty good. All right, so here's our guests. Uh, first of all, we've got Blair Rodman over here. Uh, Blair is the author of our book, Kill Phil, uh, poker tournament book, one of the best, especially for beginners. Uh, also, the upcoming All About Sports Betting, which we've been talking about. The reason Blair's here, really, he's a World Series of Poker gold bracelet winner. Uh, winning, when was it, Blair? What year? 19... 2007. 2007. Winning 700000 in a in a Hold'em game, a Hold'em tournament, of which I had 10% of. <laughs> I'm, very ha- I'm very happy to say that wasn't a bad day at the office for doing nothing, for getting drunk while watching Blair win a tournament. <laughs> so we've got him for his, you know, for his advice or his feelings on this. We're going we're gonna to go over the, all the ideas about, you know, was this ethical? Was this cheating? Was it not? Whatever. And then we've got Frank B., who is basically known as a sports betting ex- expert, but has played tournaments and contests galore. I don't know how many. Won a couple of houses, right, Frank? Well, won one house and one, some, other turn, some other contests. Okay, but, uh, won one house and, uh, and, and some other contests. He and I have played together uh, many times as partners in tournaments. Um, he's also a contributor to Blair's book, All About Sports Betting. And um, he was a winner of, the, of last year's Blackjack Ball, Blackjack Skills Contest. So you've got a pretty good group here. I would say, really, between the three of us, we've probably played 2,000 tournaments. And if you throw Andrew into the mix, we've probably played 2,010 tournaments. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Don't <laughs> just count those 10. <laughs> right? So, okay. So let me, let me start it off just by you know, explaining what we're talking about. Uh, Jonathan Tamayo is the uh, World Series champion. He beat Jordan Griff heads up uh, for the $10 million first prize. Afterwards, there was a controversy about Tamayo, I think mostly during the heads up, but maybe even during the, the final table in general, going to his rail, as they call it, to talk to his friends and coaches and, and people uh, that were supporting him. And it became obvious that they were using software to analyze what had happened uh, prior. And the big question is, should they have been able to do that? Was that the right thing to do? Is it cheating? It's, it's going all the way from this was cheating to, you know, it doesn't matter. And um, I don't know, start off with you, Blair, your opening thoughts. What do you think? I don't like it um, for several reasons. Number one, I think it's a really, it's a black eye for poker and they don't need any more black eyes. But uh, if you're in there, the World Series main event is a bucket list project for a lot of people. And now you're watching this, you say, well, I'm going to put up 10,000, you know, people save up all year for it or whatever. And then you get there and now you're watching this and you're like, well, you know, I'm an amateur. And if I somehow make it there, I'm going to play against a team of the best players in the world with this, you know, high level computer programs and everything, breaking down everything I do. You know, why would I want to play? And I think it's just a really bad look. And I think the World Series really needs to do something about it. Frank, what do you think? I mean, just from you. Now, no, I'll, I'll I'll step in for you. I mean, this isn't something that you've spent a lot of time watching or whatever, but you're a tournament player. So, I mean, just from what you've heard about it, do you agree? Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, when it comes to entering these contests and tournaments, you know, the first thing you do is you, what do you do? You examine the rules and see what's allowed and what's not. And I think it's going to eventually come down to that. It's like, all right, was this within the parameters of the rules? Or was it not? I think it's pretty clear that going forward, they're gonna, if it is within the rules and they get a, and it, it gets through, that they're gonna make some changes. But you know, it, it, to me, that's what it comes down to. But does it cheapen the win and does it uh, make it look well? There's some people that would say, yeah, you know, it's like, uh, you know, this is supposed to be uh, a contest between you know your individual poker skills, and if you're consult, I mean, I remember. The first time that online poker became a thing, do you remember when it first started? Oh, well, yeah. you can do this. What was the first? I'll tell you the first thing that crossed my mind. I can get on the AOL Messenger with my buddy, and we can go privately message back and forth, and we can play best hand. Yeah, that's assistance. You know, well, that's actually different. That's cheating. Yeah, but I'm saying using technology 
to help yourself. It's like playing chess against somebody, but I'm going to consult the computer, the, the Boris or whatever the hell it's called, yeah. and see see what it says. You know, I, it, I think it does cheapen it. It kind of goes well, deeper than that because these programs you have now for online poker, you could sit there and play your game and have a computer program right next to you that tells you what to do. You can put in the values and the hands, and it's going to tell you what to play it. Okay, well, two things here, though. First of all, it comes back to what Frank says. What do the rules say? And I'll say right up before I give my opinion, which is going to be different from you guys. If the rules say you can't do it, then you shouldn't do it. Then it's a no. Then these guys were wrong for doing it. But from everything that I've seen, and the guy who did a really great job with this, uh, the Doug Polk pod podcast, and Doug Polk gets into it, and he pretty much says too, it's it's pretty nebulous. You know, it, it's kind of up in the air about what is and what is not allowed. So I would say first of all, rules are very important. You know, what they were doing is they were using you know, uh, GTO, game theory, optimal stuff, but they were doing it after the fact, right? There's a, what was it, a 15 minute delay. It's a 30 minute delay. 30 minute delay. So he's coming over to his, he's coming over to his group and there's a 30 minute delay for the information they're giving him. You played this hand right, you could have played this hand better or whatever. To me, that's coaching. Uh, there's been coaching, there's been rails, rails and coaching ever since this thing started. What is so different about this? You think that that's the only thing they were consulting uh, that there, there was being talked about right there was the previous hand or could be his stack size is this now yours is that that the, you don't think it has something I don't know I think that I think that's not a big deal in poker they're so good at it they know you know they know what the stack sizes are they they're pretty good with that I think it's I think it's after the fact stuff all the way what's the difference and I'm asking you guys what's the difference I'm not made, stating my point yet but what's the difference between that and the Wimbledon finals where the coaches are in the coaching boxes and the coaches get to yell things down to a certain degree. There are certain rules of things they can and can't do. What's the difference? I was a wrestler and a wrestling coach for years and we would be on the edge of the mat yelling absolute instructions to our wrestlers while they were playing. What's the difference? Well, at Wimbledon, as far as that goes, they tried to stop it. They passed a rule against no coaching from the box and they couldn't stop it. They were using hand signals and everything else and they gave up because they just couldn't stop it. And they didn't want to start throwing people out. Okay, but keep it in the context of poker, though. What's yeah. so different between this and every other World Series where all of those guys go to the rail and talk to their friends? Yeah. I mean, the, the roommate of Tamayo, who won it, was Joe McKeon, right, who won it in 2015. So he's going over and he's getting advice and whatever. And what's different from that, from all the others that we've watched, where they, they get advice during the breaks or even during hands that they're not, in, that they're not playing? Yeah, the technology takes it to a new level. But as far as I'm concerned, I don't like it. The one reason I got out of poker, and especially online, is because they took it to a different level and they computerized everything. And it, it's not like old school poker where you learn by the seat of your pants and you learn by playing. And now it's all a whole different realm. And I didn't want to compete against it. I just, I didn't like it. I didn't want to have to do what they did. You know, you've got these kids spending 18 hours a day studying these GTOs and learning all these plays and everything. Good for them. But to take that into a, a nationally televised major tournament that people wait for every year and to see this, I think it's a horrible look. And I think they're going to do something about it. Now, was it cheating? I don't know. From the reading of the rules, I think it might have been. But they're certainly not going to disqualify them or they're going to take major steps. The World Series has never been especially good at that kind of thing. But I just think it's... You know, for people my age to look this and say, well, am I going to try to go through 11 days of torture to get there? And then I'm up against a team of the best players in the world. No, I don't have any interest. But if, but if it's within the rules and you're an old guy and you don't want to go through it and the young guy does, then why shouldn't he beat you? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> but why should I? You know, it's, well, like the, it's like the swimmers. They come up with the great swimsuits. There's you know, these skin tight suits that, that, that shave who, who knows how many hundreds of a second off your time. And some guys, I'm not going to wear those. Well, screw you. Yeah. You know, the person who is going to wear, he's going to get the edge. Hey, they used to play baseball in the 1880s without mitts. You know, until one, <laughs> until one guy says, my hand hurts, and he plays for his base, and he wear a mitt, and they go, they called him a punk for a little while, but then they said, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, or, or, or masks Give for goalies. <laughs> How about masks for goalies in hockey? Yeah. You know, this stuff evolves. Yeah. So, all right, hey. so here's my, here's my feeling on it. Unless the rules specifically said no. And from everything I've seen, the rules did not. I didn't dive deep into this and whatever. Again, I relied. The, the Doug Polk con uh, podcast was good for this. And I, even he seemed to say it, it's not really written in stone what this is. If this is within the rules, 
that opportunity to do what Tamayo did was available to all players. They I th- all could have done it. I think the rule said the rule says that solvers and, and, and computers well, aren't, aren't making that announcement. Aren't allowed in the tournament area. That's I don't think that, that's what, I don't is, think that's what it said. I think it said are not allowed during the play of a hand or in the tournament, tournament area. Or in the tournament no, area. No, that was I believe that was only the announcement came over right. that said do not have them, but it wasn't in the rules. Like yeah. all of a sudden they make up a quick rule and they said you may be disqualified. Well, they extended the rule. See, I think it was not, and that's why they didn't do anything, right, Andrew? You were listening to it. Absolutely, yeah. They were unclear in even what they said. They weren't. It wasn't black or white. It was subject to uh, whatever. But let's leave that out of it again. Let's assume that the rules were not clear. And let's assume that the rules were ambiguous, all right, at worst. And they said, okay, this is going to happen. I will, again, contend that this was an option that was available to everybody. And Frank, I liken this to hole carding and blackjack. Mm -hmm. That when the dealer is showing their hole card, and this has gone to to the courts and everything else, if the dealer is showing their hole card and you're not using a device to get the hole card, then you have you are allowed to use that information. That's public information that's available to everybody at the table. Maybe this seat more than that or whatever. What do you think of the analogy? How does how does that? It, so? it, it's not perfect um, because uh, you know. First off, the introduction of the technology aspect of it here. You know, they, they never anticipate what could be done until somebody does it to them. They go, oh, yeah, all right, we didn't think of that. Now we have to put a stop to that. But when it comes to, like, say, traditional hole carding and the concept of the information is available to everyone, well, it's kind of like that. Like you said, seat position matters, and then you can go, go take that to, to uh, extend that a little further. You know the concept of spooking. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's when you're sitting. Spooking is when you're sitting at a blackjack table. Here's your dealer. Your buddy's sitting at a table back there, and when the dealer back then they used to go like this to look at the whole card, will go like this. That guy behind you has the bird's eye view that nobody else at the table has, and then the signal takes place to the player, and then they're playing the hand properly. But right. that, that information is not available to everybody. Guy, it's, it's an orchestrated setup to obtain the information and then use it. So I, I mean, the guy behind the, that's positioned behind the dealer, he'd be playing at a at a game behind, is called the spook. spook yeah. And the spook would see the card and then signal with what we would call sometimes a relay, not even across, directly across with a relay, like from here to here to here to the player of what that dealer card is. And before before it's his time to play, he already knows what the dealer has in the hole. Right. And it's actually, now that I think of it, in the movie Casino, that was the uh, that was the blackjack scene where they, they were doing the spook play. Oh, was it? And I didn't realize that. Yeah, well, isn't it? They I took the guy in the back room. Yeah. Yes. He it was, was a spook play? Guy. I didn't realize that. Okay. Yeah, it was a spooking play. Yeah. And they, they took the guy in the device. back room and told yeah. him you yeah. can have the money or your hand. You can't have both. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, well fun. it's funny. When I, when, I, when I was playing professionally, and we played whole card, and the reason you play whole card, the reason we did play whole card is because it had gone through the courts and been deemed legal. Our, we've talked about this before, Andrew, on the podcast, where I said... Our point of, of stop, of demarcation, was what was legal and what was not. And was that cheating? To me, that wasn't cheating. That was allowed. And if it was allowed, it was okay. And spooking had already also been tested in the courts, and it was essentially allowed because the dealer was not protecting the thing. So that's where I come from. And I go, anybody who wants to take advantage, it goes all the way back to, to home games and poker for me, when at the end the games would, would devolve into let's play blackjack when everybody wanted to catch up, I say, fine, I'm dealer, mm. right? Because I knew more about blackjack than any of them by a mile, and I knew the dealer had the edge, and I made the rules. Yeah. All right, is that cheating? That Anyone yeah. else could have stopped me and said, I want to be dealer too. I want, to, I want to alternate the deal. None of them did. They didn't get it. They didn't understand. I knew more about it. I won the money. Mm. So that's my feeling yeah. on this. Yeah, yeah no, no, I understand. I, I think it's, it comes down to the rules. If it was there, because we've done these contests and tournaments over and over again, we're, 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 the first thing we do is we scan the rules. Okay, what's oh this this looks like something we can take advantage of, and so if it's in the rules, or, or if it's not in the rules, prohibiting it, then this is just another one of those instances where somebody found the advantage play and then and succeeded, and now they're going to make an adjustment to the rules to try to, to ace it out. Yeah. I, like five or six, seven years ago, I mean, we were playing the Golden Nugget. Uh, um, contest over uh, for the, the football. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay? the and college contest. Matt, Matt Yeomans was uh, kind of in charge of it. I can't remember the methodology for getting into it, but 
it was some kind of invite thing that I, I was allowed in. Now, it came down to the last week where, before you advance to the bracket, the elimination thing, and I only needed three points to advance. And you pick seven games. And I just told Matt, I, saw, I said, listen, I'm just, I, I'm a lock. He goes, how are you a lock? you got to get three points. I go, well, everything I see here, I'm just going to take three games and bet both sides of it. Yeah. And then I'll have a seventh random game, and I get I get a minimum of three. I'll make sure every every game is is uh, positioned on a half number, so I have no pushes, and I'm in. He goes, you know, his head start <laughs> start going away. He goes, yeah, I don't like that. If you do that, I'm not going to invite you back. Okay, and fine. Then, I'll take I'll take I'll take the win. He goes, you can do that. Obviously, I there's nothing there's nothing in the rules about. It. We never thought of that. But if you do that, you know, I'm not asking you back. What'd you do? I didn't do it. Oh, <laughs> you get, get off. Yeah, I did win. I made it. I, I finished, we finished second that year. Get off this yeah. panel. <laughs> no, because I, I, listen, implied odds. I was looking forward. You know, at the point yeah. at this time, those were an invite only thing, and I wanted to be invited back. I said, well, all right, a three, you know, even if I, I flip a coin, I'm what, 46 percent? You know? It's kind of like the one we talked about a couple of weeks ago, Andrew, where the guy hit for an $8,000. Uh, royal at the place he worked, right? And the bar owner said, "You can either have the money or your job. What do you want?" Oh yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, and and for those who didn't see that, the guy gave didn't take the money. He kept his job. Crazy. He didn't. Wow. I'd say, "Give me the eight. See you." Yeah, uh, I can be a bartender anywhere. Well, you know, now the WSOP has to make a determination. Yeah. So let them make the determination. What I'm doing, you know, there could be people out there who look at me and go, wow, I thought you were like a cool, honest guy and all that. I am. I'm real honest about it. I don't break rules. I don't break rules and I don't break laws. As long as it's legal, this is a game. This is a competition. We're, it's cutthroat for the money. And you're going against people who do break laws and rules. Yeah. So you got to use everything. It's prisoner's dilemma. Yeah, you've got to use everything. I think the World Series should have stepped in. When they saw it going on, because they knew what was going on. Maybe that no. could have been that could have been so, done too. Well, I guess they tried to step in with the announcement, but I don't think that announcement had any teeth. You know, yeah. I, I just don't think it, it meant anything. If that's if they announced it, doesn't it have to be a rule? Isn't it in the rules? I don't think it says it's in the rules. If we announce something, the rules change. I think it was in the rules. I don't know. I no, I don't, well, again, you know, watching um, Polk. And he went back a few years and he finally found something that referenced, I think, RTA, which is real time assistance. Mm -hmm. And again, is this really RTA? I don't know. This is after the fact. This is after the fact, you know, uh, research and application. Yeah. And again, I just go to who was the better player? Oh, the amateur didn't think of it. Well, maybe that's why you're an amateur. And this guy's a pro. Yeah, I go back to whether it was in the rules or not. It's a bad look for poker. And they're going to have to do something. Yeah. But, you know, then we get to the other part in Polk's video, which I hadn't seen before today, where, where he had an earphone in. And when he came off the table, he slipped it to his guy and the guy slipped it in his pocket. Now, you don't think they thought they were doing something wrong? That's what it looks like. What would they right. be? Right, I was going to bring that up. Well, first of all, Andrew, what was your you saw that? I was going to say if I was a director directing a movie looking for a shady character doing a shady move, that was it. Yeah. 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 And that's yeah. where you want to look at Polk's uh, podcast there, too, because yeah. he's got it. And uh, he says the same thing. He goes, is that the guiltiest face you've ever seen? Yeah. <laughs> you know, something along those lines. You know, he, yeah, he puts it in his pocket and he's like, you know. <laughs> but, you know, there is a rule. What would they have no been doing? Head, there right. is a rule, no headphones at the table. Once okay. you get to a final table. Oh, okay. oh, is that right? Yes. You know, because people used to have men listen to music and everything, and they were afraid of that kind of thing. So there has been a rule. Now, I don't know if it's still there. It was when I was playing. That once you got to the final table, you couldn't have headphones. You know, you, you you would think at the World Series of Poker final table, you wouldn't get so bored that you have to play music, you know. Yeah. <laughs> what do we eat? Yeah. Well, for? I think it was also suspicious when he came out in the, for the heads up with a hoodie on, which was hiding the hiding the earphone. Yeah. And then they tried to slip it. I mean, it, it's just a bad look. Was it strictly against the rules? No. Should they take his money? No. But they need to do something because it shouldn't yeah, happen let him, again. We'll let them fix it. You know, we're not, we didn't dive as deeply as many 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 who have looked at this so we're not trying to adjudicate this thing in any way i simply wanted that's why i wanted you guys on i wanted to to make the point that the the pros are going to use everything within their yeah. you know within their legal means well this and is going to keep I, I coming up that. with technology the way technology and people are figuring out new ways to use it this is going to keep happening so what we were talking about an hour ago is the answer just like you know what no phones no nothing no you, you know I don't know, block the Wi-Fi and the thing, you know, just play. Like, I, I agree with Blair in that it, it, it 
it's not nearly as compelling to watch when people are getting technological assistance. It just isn't. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Then make that point. So, okay, the final thing, we're going to give a couple of dining recommendations here, too, because we all like to eat. But uh, for those of you who, uh, who are bored by this, final analysis, I say, I say let it stand. Fix the rules. What do you say, Andrew? Well, I say the same. Let it stand, but make a determination going into next year. And uh, I say I go the other way from, uh, from you guys. I say let them use all the technology they can as long as uh, you can't see the whole cards. Have fun. Have at it. Blair? I think they need to protect their product. And by protecting their product, they need to make it look like everything's on the up and up. So I, I, like I've said, it's a bad look for poker. And I just want to add something. If you want to see, understand how powerful these solvers are, watch some of Doug Polk's videos. He did one about the last woman standing. And he shows everything. He breaks down her hands, what she should have done, what she, you know, what her proper play was. And you're, my mind is boggled at just how in-depth these things are and how much they tell you about things. So if you want to get into poker, you need to use this stuff if you want to get no limit. It's for no limit mostly and some for PLO. But these things are incredibly powerful. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, first off, I think it's far less compelling of an event to watch if the if the players are getting assistance, I mean, what, what, what's interesting to watch is how people act under pressure, how they react, do they tighten up, you know, because that's that's a common uh, uh, fault of certain people. When the when you raise the level, the money goes way up. All of a sudden, people tighten up. They pick you know, in sports contests. They uh, you know they'll start picking every favorite. They just can't bring themselves mm -hmm. to take a dog and say. And it's the same thing here. It's it's interesting to watch people under pressure. And if you're getting the answer from uh, you know your technology. I think that takes away from it uh, dramatically. But uh, I'm, I'm with him when it comes to if it's in the rules and he got up and, and, and he found that and he used it, bravo, change the rules going forward so they can't do it anymore. I want to add one thing about the, the headphone piece. So we're saying, okay, it's 30 minutes delayed. But if you've got a headphone in and you've got a team of guys looking at the other player for tells or things that might tattle yes. on the hand he's in at that time, well, that's real-time assistance, and that is really bad. Yeah. And I think that's why they wanted to hide the headphones so much. Agree with that. If, it, if that comes out, then that's a different uh, conversation. Well, I think they should do it like a game show where they just like do it like you guys said, where they're not allowed to do any sort of technology. But that final table, like as long as you can't see the whole cards, bring in the yeah. gaming. Bring in the experts, bring in the there. coaches. Blair, Blair's, You've run off a Blair's the, the keeper of the uh, the poker flame yeah. and the... Uh, <laughs> You're going to run off people. I'm just going to say, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. You know what I was going to say? I, yeah. didn't, I didn't say it because there was no place for it. But I was going to say, yeah, that, uh, that uh, pinnacle of, of uh, reverence poker. Yeah, you know, <laughs> where everybody is so honorable. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, the sports betting analogy is like, you know, nowadays you get, you know, bots and everything, you know, you, you, yeah. you, it, it, yeah. between the model and then the bot making the, you don't have to do it. All you got to do is set it all up in advance and let everything run and it takes care of it. I mean, you want poker to be, like I said, it's going to be a less compelling thing to watch. I mean, uh, if you play online poker now, you're just, you're an idiot. No. Because you're up against I thought I mean, you were idiot on day one. Yeah. On I, day one, it came out. I said, I go, what's going to stop somebody from playing best hand against you? Even an unsophisticated best hand. Not only that. Not, uh, what? Yeah. Not only so that, every but, game you're in, you, 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 if you're not doing it, you know, it truly, that saying, if you look around the table and you can't see the chump, you're it. It truly applies to online poker. Yeah, it's like the <laughs> UB thing. I was saying, well, what, you know. Yeah. I, the, I was thought the greatest thing in poker was that if you look at your hand, you fold it. You're the only one in the universe that knows what your hand was. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, when they first started televising and made people, Eric Seidel said, I'm not showing my cards to anybody. And they mm -hmm. said, well, you're not playing. And he was getting free rolled. So he said, mm -hmm. you know, he came around. But yeah, it's just, and now you got all that information. If you're a, you know, computer nerd, you put it all on a program. You can tell exactly how people are going to play. I don't, yeah. But I, online poker is almost dead. Because people, you know, there's still suckers that'll come. Yeah, partially because of online sports betting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of people would rather bet sports than play poker. I'll tell you that. Yeah, that too. I guarantee you. Yeah, I know. Which is why your book's going to be good. Yeah. Okay, we'll get we'll Phil, get to that. At they the killed Phil. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to lighten it up here. We're going to talk a little bit about dining. Uh, where did you go eat last night, Anthony? All right, this is a good one. I don't know if you guys have ever tried this before. Uh, I've done it once before. Went last night with D. Castleman. It's called uh, Double Zero Pie and Pub. Do you know what the Double Zero refers to? No. Do you? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, it's, yeah, um, double Zero refer refers to the flour that they use. 
to make the crust. Okay. It's double. It's called double rose, double zero really? flour. Yes. Yeah, I had no idea. That's great. Yeah. All I, no I, all I know it's is the best for pizza. It's the best uh, classic Italian uh, chefs all. All right, we got our Italian idea. guy here. Thanks for the information. I yeah. had no, I had no idea about that. All yeah. I know is that the crust is what makes it. Yeah. That wow. and the toppings of this place. So it's double zero pie and pub. Now what they promoted as Tokyo style pizza, Tokyo Japan. All right. So no, here's the story on this. This is, um, ah, shoot, I should have the guy's name. You know, maybe we'll put it up in the thing, what his name was in the uh, comments, I mean, the description. But this was a New York City Italian, you know, uh, pizza, pizziola, whatever they call him. He's a pizza maker. And he heard that they make the best Neapolitan pizza in Tokyo. He didn't know why or whatever. So he traveled. This is what they told us yesterday. Traveled to Tokyo, checked it out and said, damn, if they don't. And brought it back. So this is Tokyo style Neapolitan pizza. It is like the airiest, crispiest crust. It's just unbelievable. And then there, a big thing about it is their um, the toppings. And I mean, it's just all kinds of different things that you never heard of before. It was terrific. Uh, we also had I had one of the best Caesar salads I ever had. And they said something called pickles, which is just basically uh, vegetables that have been. Um, Kind of like marinated, fermented. fermented. Yeah, really, absolutely terrific. It's wow. in Chinatown. And the whole thing, I mean, we tried, Deke and I, two of us tried a bunch of things. The whole thing came to 50 bucks. Nice. Wow, sounds like a place I got to go to. Yeah, you got to give you got to give this one a try. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I, no one else can talk about it because well, it didn't do it. I mean, those are some exotic toppings, I'm, I'm guessing, going on there. The non-traditional toppings. Yeah. Yeah. One of them I'd never even heard of before called Spec. You know what speck is? Yes, it's a derivative. It's it, it's a cured meat. It's a in, in the uh, uh, pancetta family, I guess you would say. It's a, it, you'll find it in Italian delis everywhere. Speck is uh, it's pretty it, common. You know what it tastes to me? It was like prosciutto. Yeah, it was oh, like nice. prosciutto. Pancetta, prosciutto. And we got the mozzarella. I mean, the regular, um, uh, regular just red sauce pizza. It was like I guess their version of cheese and marinara. It was called. And Deke goes, "Can we put speck on it?" I go, "Sure." And he puts it on, and it comes with, and it's like a pizza covered with, uh, with, um, with this terrific ham, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, like prosciutto. Yes, it's fabulous, absolutely. Matter of fact, fabulous. if you if you ball, go to an Italian deli and you get speck, and they 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 slice something like that, you open it up, it looks very similar. It's sliced the yeah. same way, that, you know. The things you learn at the yeah. advisor. So terrific, and it's <laughs> it's in Chinatown. It's in the the Chinatown Plaza, right at the corner of uh, right where. Um, Fokim Long is, or where the uh, what's the name What'd of the golden your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> golden Tiki? It's yeah, in, Golden it's, Tiki. It's oh, in, okay, it's right there. Yeah, right next door. By Yama Lee's, Sushi, by Lee's? Yama Sushi, Lee's. Yeah, all Mas that. Right there. Oh, uh -huh. it's fantastic. Okay. One more thing about that: they don't do takeout, and part of it was their their uh, their thing for a while was that the the pizza maker didn't want it traveling because he wanted people to taste it at its best and all. But they kind of came clean. They said. We'd be running around all day long doing takeout, so they don't do takeout. You got to go there and eat. You got to eat. There. Do they have? Can other you come take food? away? Can you, you can take away? Up and yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, do they, do, well, no. You can like be eating there, and they'll give you a box. Oh, you just can't come pick up a whole. We pack? have one piece left. We have one piece left. And Deke goes, "Can I have a box?" They gave him a pizza box, regular size, right? <laughs> so they don't know. They don't want you taking out. They won't let you take a pizza out unless unless you schmooze them. I did it once. Is before. it just pizza? or They have other Italian food. Oh no, it's just pizza. Okay. Uh, pizza and a bunch of greats and so you know side dishes that kind of stuff salads and things so spec i consider that a traditional uh, that would be that would fall in the category of a traditional type but any non-traditional like funky seafood or i mean i don't know what your opinions are on fruit on pizza but they've got a bunch of th a bunch of mixtures i've never seen before let's just put it that way a bunch of things that i had not seen before some of them sweet pizzas some of them white white sauce pizzas you know, several different kinds. Maybe uh, it, maybe I gotta, we gotta go there. Yeah. yeah, and it sounds like you can make your own because we asked to put the spec on, and they did. Mm. Okay. Uh, what about the uh, tequila tasting at the Rio Wine Cellar, Anthony? You want to talk about that? Well, Frank's going to talk about that because that's one of the reasons Frank's here. When we're done, okay. We're Blair, Frank, myself. We're working on Blair's book. We we'll talk about that last when we're almost done here. When we're done here, but then we're going tequila tasting. Right. What's yeah. it about? So um, I live in Mexico, Jalisco, which is the, that's where it's, it's like if they, their champagne comes from Champagne, France, tequila comes from Jalisco, Mexico, primarily. And um, so I'm very, uh, I, I like these kind of things. And uh, I was just uh, watching the show last week when you went to a 
tasting event. Was it a cocktail thing over at the yeah, wind? Yeah, it was a, 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 bever a beverage making. Yeah, yeah. so something Mixologist. very similar to that. So this is a, um, uh, a, a not, a, it's not a new brand, but it's definitely a designer uh, type of tequila along the lines of, if there's bourbon people out there, what do, you, what do they call it? Uh, Grandpappy, Willie, oh, you know, Grand, uh, Grand Winkle, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pappy, Grand, Pappy Van Winkle. Yeah, so it's one of these types of liquors that you can't buy a bottle of it unless you are, are, have advanced information on where it's going to, how many bottles are going to get, and you stand in line and get it. And it is called Cierto. So, uh, and they're going to bring four types of, uh, you know, the four levels of the tequila, Blanco, Reposado, Añejo, and the extra Añejo. And uh, it's just an hour and a half. They're going to talk to you for about uh, 40 minutes and tell you what's going on. And then we're going to try these uh, in order, these flighted tequilas, mm -hmm. I'm guessing, in uh, ascending order. Of, uh, this is the wine cellar, yeah. uh, one, of the, one of the restaurants at, uh, or restaurants or bars, whatever you want to call it, at the Rio. And is I'm it, assuming that at the end, uh, you know, or at, during that, you're going to be able to buy it, which is the, one of the reasons I want to go, because this is a tough bottle to buy. I'm assuming they're going to allow you to buy a bottle of something there. So that's the, uh, so, you know, we're going to, we're going to check that out in, in a few hours. 45 bucks. They do it all the time? Or no, it's, it's just thing? this one time for this. They do wine tastings all the time over there. Yeah. Different, different, uh, you know, winemakers and stuff, but they're doing this tequila thing there. And I just so happens that, you know, I'm in town and, uh, you here's, know, yeah, here's right, what you, right, right in my wheelhouse. Here's what you want to do when you go to the Rio and you get a card, they're going to give you some free play on that card. I'm not sure what their system is on that, but you're also going to get your name. You'll give them your email. And they will send you the schedules of when they're going to do these tastings for wine. And this one just happened to be tequila with Frank coming in. So uh, he's in for the blackjack ball and to work on Blair's book. Speaking of, so we'll report on that once we've done it. Speaking of, Blair, what's the, what's the, how's your book? What's the update? What's the status? A lot of people going, is this book ever, ever going to come out? <laughs> <laughs> it's getting there. It's been a long haul. But, uh, you know, we're working on it now. It's going to go in production pretty soon, I hope. And uh, we were shooting for getting up for football season. That's kind of touch and go, but yeah. uh, it's come along great. I think it's going to be a super, super product. Yeah, we're going to have a, a chapter by uh, almost exclusively from Frank um, with a lot of input throughout, a little bit from me here and there, uh, some stuff on contests and all. Yeah. And uh, we're hoping this is going to be um, one of the top books on sports that yeah, has come out. A little bit of everything. The contest thing is a good thing to have. Yeah, it. these are Matt just Max guys, and you got to too. explain that and how you get into that and some of how that mm -hmm. went down. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there. You know, I was a part of a major sports betting team for 10 years. I go through that year by year, and uh, I think that's be fun reading for people that don't really understand what's going on at the high levels. That's a fascinating discussion. That's a, that's a really good one. A quick story on that. With Blair's uh, sports betting team was our blackjack team and, and, you know, our gambling team when we played tournaments together and played blackjack uh, outside, you know, uh, you know, for money on live tables. When we got too well known, everybody went off to other things, but we've started a, um, a sports betting attempt. And I was in on the first bank. Everybody was. I was in the first bank and made it immediately made two grand, I think, like in three days and came back. And the, the guy who was who was doing all the modeling for it, wanted more money. And I said, uh, I won't do it. I was the only one who said I won't, and I quit. They all stayed. And four or six million later, uh, I was on the outside looking in, and uh, it didn't matter that the guy made more money, right? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that, 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 that's still, it's like the move. Or, oh, I ran good. I'll, I want more. But know? it took a few years yeah. to, to get really profitable. So it It's was, a great it story. Was, it's in the book. It was tough, but so. it was rewarding. It was fun. And uh exhausting but it was a great experience yeah give you a good look into what it takes yeah is that it andrew we done sounds good to me well guys thank you uh it's been a real pleasure having you thank you for coming down as always uh blair was our first guest i think frank might have been our second guest Probably. ever so uh, it's now not like these are the only guests we can get we can do it we can get others but uh oh, thanks and <laughs> and our and our and our every time we've got a different setup right this yeah. is a different setup this one's uh, we'll see i like it yeah this one might stick let us know what you think to